Hi, today we are here to do our commodity presentation. We are group number eight, and I would like to start by introducing our group members. Mr. Amandeep Singh, Mr. Bian Joseph, Mr. Kevin George, and myself, Abu Abraham. Next slide, please. Here is the agenda of our commodity presentation. First, we will have a company overview. Then we will look into the commodity we have selected, that is steel, and the different types of steel, and the particular uh, particular type of steel called cold rolled steel, and the supplies of steel, the packaging and delivery, the pricing and availability of steel, and of course the price trends. Next slide, please. And this is a company overview. The company we have selected is Toyota. Toyota, as you know, is one of the largest manufacturers of cars and it is headquartered in Japan and the company was uh, founded in 1937 by the founder Kirishiro Toyota. It has got presence in more than 150 countries and it has got manufacturing units in 69 different locations and when it comes to Canada Toyota has got three manufacturing units two in Cambridge and one in Woodstock and it employs 8,000 people and it follows just in an in-time inventory system. Just in time inventory system is an inventory management system where the inventory is supplied to the manufacturer just when it is required for production so that the inventory cost is brought down to a minimum level. Thanks for that please. And the commodity we have selected is steel. Toyota buys raw steel for the manufacturing purpose and they buy cold rolled steel which comes in the form of sheets. And steel is used for manufacturing of the chases of the cars and for manufacturing the body panels, the door beams, roofs and a lot of other body parts. And average of 55% of the car's weight is constituted by the weight of steel. Next slide please. And here is how it looks like the cold roll steel. It, it is uh, as it is in the picture, it is brought in the form of a sheet. Next slide please. Now we'll look into the advantages and disadvantages of steel. When it comes to the advantages, steel has got better finishing, it is more harder and stronger, it has got good resistance against tension and deformation. And the disadvantages includes high price, less fuel efficiency and less resistance to corrosion. Next slide please. Now I invite Bion to discuss about the different types of steel. Thank you Abu. I'll be talking about the different types of steel. First, let me begin with AISI 1010. It's a plain carbon steel and it has a carbon percentage of 0.10%. It is relatively a low strength steel, but it can be improved by tempering. Now let me also talk about the chemical composition. It consists of the following elements. That is iron, manganese, copper, phosphorus and sulfur. The key, the key characteristics of AISI 1010 are good formality and ductility. Due to this reason, it can be formed using conventional methods. Talking about the mechanical properties, it has a tensile strength of 364 MPa, yield strength of 304 MPa, and elastic modules range between 190 to 209 GPa. The other designations are AMS 5050, AMS 5055, and this. Next slide, please. This is AISA. 1020. It is another plain carbon steel and the carbon percentage ranges between 0.12% to 2%. It gains hardness and strength through heat treatment. Talking about the chemical composition, it consists of iron, carbon, manganese, phosphorus and sulfur. The key characteristics are good strength and ductility. Talking about the mechanical properties, it has a tensile strength of 420 MPa. Yield strength of 350 MPa, modules of elasticity of 205 GPa. The other designations are AMS 5054, AMS 5045C, ASTM A108. Next slide, please. This is cold rolled steel. It is manufactured in a temperature that is below recrystallization temperature. The key characteristics are smooth and shiny finish and sharper corners compared to a hot, hot, hot rolled steel. The chemical composition, it consists of following elements, that is carbon, manganese, phosphorus and sulfur. Talking about the mechanical properties, as an yield strength of 70,000 PSI, tensile strength of 85,000 PSI. The other designations are C108, C1010, C1080, C1026 and C1045. Now I invite Amandeep to take the lead. Thank you so much. So, now the question is that which supplier is good for Toyota? We have three suppliers, 
two domestic and one international. The first one is Canada Steel, and the another one Steel Co. Both are domestic, and the another one Kobe Steel. It's international, already doing business with Toyota. Canada Steel, reputed company, can provide a high quality material on time because they are using just in time delivery, like Toyota is doing. And the another one Steel Co. It's also domestic, located in Hamilton, can produce high uh, cold steel on time and they are also using just in time process. Kobe steel, uh, uh, Toyota have experience to work with Kobe steel so they know more about that. Next slide please. Now the main concern is delivery and packaging. For delivery, transportation department usually use uh, wraps, uh, straps and uh, the material, the one bundle will be between uh, one to two ton and uh, a single roll will be tied between circumferential and uh, radial strap, one circumferential strap and two radial straps. Two wooden lathes will be good to prevent skidding and uh, bands will, uh, should be waterproof to prevent corrosion. And uh, we can prevent uh, corrosion by using paper and nylon. And the another thing is, and the last thing is, final strapping of band. For final wrapping, uh, department need to use uh, three straps. It will be good. And uh, these three suppliers will use this thing for the packaging. Thank you so much. Now Kevin will tell you more about factor affecting price and availability. Thank you so much. Thank you so much, Amandeep. So I'll be talking about the factors affecting the price and availability of steel. So let's get straight into this. Cost of raw materials. Steel is made up of iron and metals and some non-metal commodities. So any changes in these prices of these commodities will have a huge impact on the price and availability of steel. Energy cost. Oil does have a huge impact on the price of steel. Whenever the oil price increases, the price of steel also increases. It has been like that for the last 10 years. And whenever the oil price increases, the price of steel also increases. Industry trends. Steel is also used in other industries other than automotive industries. So any change in the situations in these industries will affect the situation in automotive industries too. It could affect the price and availability of steel. Availability of recycled steel. Steel is one of the most recycled commodities in the world. About 60% of the steel is recycled and used again. So the availability of the steel to be recycled does have a huge impact on the availability and the chance of production in the future for the new steel. Government regulations. Government provide production quotas and production subsidies for the manufacturers of steel. So the manufacturers highly relies on, relies on these subsidies and quotas. So any change in these government policies or quotas will have a huge impact on the availability and both the price of steel. So let's talk about the price trend of steel in North America. Most of you might have been familiar with the word short term. Short term means 2000 LBs. So the prices shown here is the price per 2000 LBs. So let's get straight into 2014. It was 845 Canadian dollars per short term in 2014 and it went up to 872 in 2015 which is not a huge increase in price. And from 2015 to 2016 it went down to 668 and it went straight up to 971 in 2017. And from 2017 to 2000, uh, 2018, it went up to 1,295, which is almost $450 difference from 2014 to 2018. It was a huge difference. Now we are just into four months in 2019, and we are standing at 1,122 Canadian dollars per short term. So that's all the information a purchaser should be having before meeting a supplier to purchase the steel. That's all about it. Thank you.